to put protect black birthing people and to save lives. All right, a lot to break down there. So let's bring in our company town hall contributor, Erin Elmore and host of the Grace Curley show, Grace Curley. Ladies, welcome back. Thank you. All right, Erin, I'm gonna start with you because I know you are a mother. So happy belated Mother's Day to you. Uh, a birthing person, you know, I like to look at the science and the science would tell us that the only people who can birth another human are women. Yes, and to minimize us, to say that all we've done is given birth, that was one day, okay? We have to raise these children, we have to feed these children, clothe these children, educate these children, parent these children, have them survive in this big bad world. So why are they talking about what we did on one day, which was birthing these children? And another thing she said in her speech is to protect black babies. Well, honestly, that means black babies in the womb as well. I would love to ask her how she feels about that topic because I bet you more than a dollar that there's some hypocrisy going on there. I care about all babies in and outside of the womb and I care about all mothers on every day, just not the day that they gave birth. Amen. Mm, I like that. I'd love for you to ask her. I'd love to see what her response is. But Grace, you know that in Washingtonian, it's a magazine in uh, the D.C. area that talks about the best restaurants and all that. I'm sure everyone has a, a similar thing. This, the publisher of it put an op-ed in the Washington Post talking about why she wants people to return to work and brought up some really interesting points, right? There's mentorship. Uh, you can interact with people and collaborate, right? And that doing everything over Zoom isn't actually you know, the part of being an employee versus a contractor. And she talked about that. Contractors don't get health benefits, all these other things. They stay at home and they work on projects. And she should fire them. Well, yeah, and listen, I do believe that there is a culture of being in an office, being around people. My husband is a CEO, and he's always said that. When you're there, when you're together, you're always better than you're at home in your pajamas. You just feel better. But I will say this, to the government that hasn't sent their workers back, and to the New York-based companies that have been preaching COVID restrictions, they can't have it both ways. So if you're a liberal and saying that COVID is deadly, you gotta wear 19 masks, don't you dare tell me to come back to work. So you gotta be very careful here. But there is a culture of people that don't wanna work. Look at these jobs numbers that came out on Friday. They were way lower than we thought that they would be yeah. because people are making more money on unemployment and government assistance. We have a culture of young people, millennials, that do not wanna work. And that's why I tell my son every day, you're gonna roll your sleeves up and work really hard because I am anti that anti-work culture. Grace, look, I, I think that we have learned, hopefully, that there's a little bit of a balance, right? For for there's a work life balance. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it might be helpful for childcare that somebody works part time uh, remotely or at home and come into the office. But at the end of the day, what I thought was interesting is this woman owns this publication, or and just call it anything. It's any other thing, and the employees are telling her how to operate her business. The, and the candy. They know that system works and they're gonna keep doing it. I do I actually thought she made the case very articulately. I thought she made a great case as well. I think the delivery might have blindsided some people and been a little bit surprising. Erin, Grace, great to have you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I'll come and work in your office anytime. All right, <laughs> we'll be glad to have you.